Okay guys, I just wanted to show you how you get the fake sheet to work. So the fake sheet is actually a mod for Fabric. If you don't know what Fabric is, you should google it. It's basically a launcher for Minecraft that can have multiple mods and they all run together. So you have to go to Fabric's website, I'll leave the link in the description and all that. And first thing you have to download is Fabric, you know, the launcher, the Minecraft launcher for Fabric. I think you just click any one of these and then you run them and install it. The only thing that you have to think about is that when you run the in Fabric installer, make sure that you're installing the 116.4 because the fake sheet was built for 1.16.4. 1.16.5 hadn't been released when I was coding the, the fake sheet for Minecraft. Just click this link and voila, you will come to the download of this one. Just click download afterwards. That should be fine. After you're done installing Fabric, you're ready to put the fake sheet in the mods folder. And how do you find the mods folder? So you go to the easiest, this is the easiest way. You just do two of these and then put app data here. And then you go into Minecraft and you have a lot of stuff here and you should have a folder called mods. And in here you put the fake sheet right there. I have mine here, uh, my special version right there. And then you need to put also, you need to download Fabric API mod, which is a mod to go with Fabric with that will give some extra stuff, okay? So this one can also be downloaded if you go back to the Fabric website. I think they mentioned it. Yeah, here. Uh, most mods also require to install Fabric API in the mods folder. Okay, guys, so I'm going to show you how I'm getting the replace. So as you can see here, the first thing that happens when they load into the game is that they get the terms and conditions. And I'm warning them that using sheets might get them bad and worse. And then I'm literally stating in here everything that's going to happen to them. So in here, I've actually stated that if they accept the terms and conditions, it will create a replace from the gameplay and it will send me that replay after each game session. So if they accept those conditions, they are loaded into the Minecraft version that has the fake sheet. And at this point, you can see up to my left, I have my Google Drive here. So I'm gonna simulate how it actually works. So how it works is the sheet that can join any server, right? They have join here and then we go into my server. Let's just join my server right here. Anyway, guys, as you can see, I loaded into the game right now and I'm running around on my server with my fake sheet mod installed. So, you know, I have the, f the fake sheet menu, I can activate invisibility and all that stuff. You know, I'm a cheater, I think it's real, yada yada. And as you can see to the left, I have my Google Drive up in the second window up there to the left. So what happens is when the fake sheet is installed, it actually comes bundled with the version of replay mode. If you don't know what replay mode is, that's basically a full-fledged replay system, similar to how it works in CSGO and in PUBG. It creates replay files when you play the game of what's happening and those files can then be loaded into the game engine and re-render what happened at a later point so you can watch from different angles and stuff so everything here is actually being stored into this replay file uh, data about what's happening and that data can then be re-rendered in the game engine to see what happens so let's see what happens now i've been playing for you know a few minutes as soon as i leave this uh, match i should get a replay let's see if i disconnect there we go let's see what happens And as you can see, after a few seconds, it popped up uh, to the left there. Uh, the, the replay basically was uploaded. So uh, there it is. Uh, this is now the replay. I could download this and load it into the game. Okay, guys, so I just unzipped the replay that I downloaded. So it comes with the replay file, which can be loaded into the game. And it also comes with a log file. Uh, and if I open this log file, you can see it's my own logging program, a tool that I, I added. The, there's only one entry. It's the silent creeper. And... Basically, that's the only punishment that happened during my small game sessions there. I'm not going to go into details what this punishment is. And if you wonder what all of this stuff is, it's just when I'm streaming, I want to show replay. Sometimes I've built an integration uh, into a Minecraft so that I can jump to a point in the replay directly by clicking here from the log. So if I'm watching replays, you know, it's easy for me to show that on stream. Uh, so basically, this is the punishment that happened. So let's load into the game and, and see if it works. Okay guys, so I've loaded into the game again and now you can see the replay viewer button here because this is not the, the fake sheet version that doesn't have the UI. So here I click on replay view and here is my, my replay from the one I tested. So let's load into that one. And as you can see here now, this is me. I'm a, where did I go? I fall down to the, to the toilet. And uh, yeah, so this is replay mode. You see with the UI and everything. And from here I can obviously, you know, hide this and I can create clips and stuff like that. So at this point, how I get the, the replays and how I make the clips for my videos for Minecraft. And as you can see in the replay mode, you get the free look. You can move around and from any angle and stuff like that. Okay, guys, I just want to do a really quick mention about why I'm not showing like 
the cheater's name in every clip. And to be honest, like it was almost driving me a little bit crazy myself because of my OCD when I was, you know, making the clips that the cheater doesn't always have the name and his teammates sometimes have. In, in reality, it's just come down to some kind of bug or something. But I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you right, right now what I'm talking about, guys. So you, s you remember this clip from the video? So this guy, he attacks this one and he falls down right there. But as you can see here, it's so weird because I can see his teammate's name and I can see, I can't see his name, right? On some replays in some game modes, the local player's name doesn't show up for me in the replay mode. Uh, maybe someone in the comments can tell me why that is. But for instance, here it's not showing up. But the weirdest thing even more is that it actually shows up before this game starts. Like it, when he's waiting in the lobby, you can see his name. So if I go, I know that his name is ic 4 gamer You see he's standing right here, right? ic 4 gamer Let's jump back to, I think it was just before the match started. 1.30 somewhere around here here as you can see guys it works perfectly in the lobby i guess he doesn't have the health fair. i don't know why that matters but for some reason his name is showing up you know it's showing up perfectly fine right here uh, but as soon as he gets into the game it disappears on this game mode for some reason anyway guys i just wanted to show you that it's not on purpose um, maybe someone in the comments can tell me why it's working like that Anyway, guys, this is the download statistics of the fake sheet while I was running the ads, okay? Germany is topping the list right here. Germany, Poland, Australia, France, and Brazil. Uh, and then it starts dropping pretty fast, guys. Uh, but yeah, these are the downloads, uh, the people clicking on the download. This doesn't necessarily mean that all of them, you know, use the fake sheet because they still have to, you know, install it and they have to actually accept the terms and conditions and they have to go into a game. Uh, and stuff like that but this is the amount of downloads while i was running the ads anyway and i was running it from the 9th until the 20th and some days i turned it off because i wanted to tweak something and stuff like that this is also quite interesting here i'm looking at how many times each punishment activated so for instance can you even bridge bro the one that causes them to accidentally walk off the edge of a block activated 214 times in total between 33 different cheaters basically so we know that at least 214 times that activated and uh, not all of them are obviously gonna lead to them falling and dying maybe sometimes they were just sneaking and didn't you know they didn't fall or something but i'm sure at least a hundred of these i would say are them falling and hurting themselves or even dying in the game and another one that interesting is do you even float bro 75 times that means that they've been stuck underwater and dying 29 different cheaters has been stuck uh, between 75 and a lot of them you know was during the one with the toilet he reconnected or tried to connect to different servers and kept falling so every time you know this number goes up but it may be the same cheater that it happens to a few times okay guys i just want to go over some of the coding i know most of you guys don't care but some of you are quite interested so i thought i would look at some of the coding so if you didn't know, the fake sheet for Minecraft is actually a mod that is running on Fabric. So if you're wondering what Fabric is, it's basically a modding toolchain for Minecraft. When you're creating a Fabric mod similar to my fake sheet, by using different mixins, I'm able to hook into Minecraft's client and change, add or remove code and anything I need to make my different punishments work on the client side. So let's look at the punishment. Here I have my different punishments. Let's look at, let's start to look at the one called force connect. This is the punishment that made the cheater always connect to my toilet server uh, while this one was active. So here we have the code that does the, the force connect. So how it works is whenever the cheater tries to connect to any multiplayer server, uh, we're basically hooking into the connect method that is inside the connect screen and we're changing the parameters that that one receives. So it, it, it can take the address and it can take port and we're just hijacking it and changing it to hard coded values right here. So every time they connect, they will connect to my server and I will show you right here. Okay guys, so I loaded into the game and now the fake sheet is activated with the toilet punishment that will force me to connect to my server. So even if I try to connect to Hypixel, it will actually redirect me to my server. Let's see what happens. As you can see, I'm spawning here and I'm falling all the way down into my toilet. Another punish we can look at, we can look at, do you even float, bro? That's the one that makes it so that every time they dive underwater, they will sink and they can't get up again. 
So if we're looking at our mixing, we're mixing into the entity class and then we're shadowing a few of the methods that exist in the entity class. And shadowing means that we can use these methods or variables or whatever we want to shadow from this class. We can use them in our injection in our custom code right here. And then finally, we're injecting into a method that exists inside the entity class. And the method is called set velocity. And set velocity is called whenever the character is moving. Whenever you try to move left, right, up, down, this method is called with inside uh, the entity class. And what we're doing is that we, we're injecting our own code, inject, into the head, which means at the top, the absolute first thing that runs inside this method gonna be our own custom code. And we're checking if the fake sheet is enabled. And then we're checking if you're submerged underwater. So this one returns true if the player is actually under the surface of water. And if that is true, then we are sending our own set velocity where we are changing the y value, which is the one that's gonna make him, since we take a minus here, this value is gonna make him go down towards the bottom. And then we're simply canceling the original call to the set velocity. So any code that, uh, that set velocity has that should have been run after our own code, is just gonna be canceled. So whatever you were trying to move up, down, left, right, we're canceling that call and instead just sending a changing the, w the y value to start going downwards. Another punishment, and then this one is a little bit more advanced, is the arrow rain. This is the one that shoots the arrows straight up every time they try to use the bow. And this one needed multiple mixins. And I'll explain a little bit of how the different mixins work. So the Minecraft client class has a, a method called tick. This one will run on every frame of the game. I think it's like 20 times per second. So the first thing we're checking if the player's main weapon is equal to bow. The next step is that we want to make him shoot the arrow on our own command. So to do that, we're getting information about how long he's been holding the right mouse button. When you're holding the right mouse button, when you have the bow, you're tightening the arrow to shoot it. The longer you hold it, the, the more power you're gonna have with the arrow to shoot it further. But what we wanna do is we wanna shoot it just with enough power so that it goes up and falls down pretty fast to hopefully hit himself in the head. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the integer number for how long, how much power is using right now. And if that is higher than four, which turned out to be a pretty good number, most of the time the arrow just go up and falls down pretty fast on his head. If it's higher than four, then we want to go ahead and activate our punishment. And what we simply are doing at that point is that we are sending uh, in the interaction manager, we're sending the stop using item, which tells the game that I released my arrow. So this is what will make him release the arrow without actually releasing the mouse button. He's still holding right to try to tighten his arrow, but every half second or so he's gonna release the arrow. But that's not it guys. We also need to make sure he actually shoots it up in the air. And that's why we needed to do a mixing into another class. And to do that, we inject it into the client player manager class and we are injecting into stop using items. So whenever the player stops using an item, which is he releases the arrow, which we triggered with the code in the previous class. So whenever this one is triggered, we wanna run our custom code to change the view angle. So actually the server thinks that he shot it straight up in the air. So when our code triggers the stop using item, we're also hooking into the head of this method to have our own code. And what we're doing there is we're checking again, make sure that our our main weapon is bow, and if that is true, we are sending bogus view angle to the server. We are sending a packet to the server and telling the server that this player is actually looking straight up, minus 90 in the pitch. We, we go straight up in the air. And this happens just before it releases the actual arrow. So this one sends the bogus view angles, causing him to shoot the arrow straight up according to the server.